Welcome back to Giant Monster Games, I'm Adrian, and today we are doing an under $40 budget Goblins deck. Now this is kind of like a Goblins Tokens deck because we're going to be winning by going wide, but I'm not going to start out with the Goblins Tokens, I'm going to start with what Goblins we actually have in the deck. But before we actually do that, don't forget to comment on this video, like the video, and subscribe to Giant Monster Games if you like this content and want to see more of it. Also, like always, there is voting up in the top corner. This week we're doing something a little bit different with voting, so feel free to check that out. Anyways, let's get into this video talking about what creatures we are actually playing in this deck. Starting out with four copies of Foundry Street Denison. Now this card is probably one of our best one drops because he comes into play, he's a 1-1 one, one for one, which is whatever, but whenever another red creature enters the battlefield under our control, he gets plus one, plus O until end of turn. And because we're gonna be making a bunch of goblin tokens, this guy's actually gonna get really big really fast. The next card we have is Goblin Pile Driver. We got four copies of this in the ring, and this card is hilarious. So basically, it is a 1-2 for 2 mana, which is pretty good. It has protection from blue, which is neat, I guess, but its ability is what makes it fantastic. So whenever Goblin Pile Driver attacks, it gets plus 2 plus 0 oh for each other attacking goblin. And because our objective of this deck is to go really wide, Goblin Pile Driver can easily turn into like a 9-9 nine nine or an 11-11, with relatively ease in this deck, making him very hard for our opponent to deal with is probably one of the best cards in the entire deck. Now we have Mog War Marshal. Wow, that's a really hard name to say. We're running three copies of this guy, and it is adding to the number of goblins we're going to be getting under the table, because when he enters the battlefield, he creates a 1-1 token, and when he dies, he creates another 1-1 token. So we're actually potentially going to get three goblins out of this guy for two mana, which is actually fantastic value for us, because lots of times we're not even going to pay his echo cost, because we have a lot of ways of giving our goblins haste, so we're just going to drop him on the battlefield, let him attack. If our opponent blocks him, we're going to get a goblin of the deal, and if not, he's just going to die and we're going to get a new goblin anyways. The next card we have is four copies of Signal Pest, and this is a card you do not generally see in a Goblins deck, largely because it is not a Goblin, but it actually works really well because whenever Signal Pest attacks, it gives plus one plus oh to each other attacking creature, and it is really hard to block. It can only be blocked by creatures with reach or flying, so basically means you swing in with Signal Pest every single turn because it is super hard to block and <laughs> just makes all your creatures bigger. It's kind of like having a Lord in the deck without actually having a Lord in the deck. And the last two creatures creature cards we have in this deck are four copies of Goblin Bushwhacker and four copies of Reckless Bushwhacker. Now these cards are kind of the same card except they are both a little bit different. So the main thing that both these cards have in common is there is an alternate way of casting them where they give all of our creatures a plus one plus oh effect and haste. So whenever we play a bunch of creatures in one turn, so if we play one of our spells it's going to create a bunch of tokens, we can then play this card immediately after and then give all of our tokens and all of our creatures plus one plus oh and haste so we can generally ambush our opponent and get a ton of damage in really quickly. These cards are ideally played mid-game, and you don't ever want to play them without actually playing them for their extra ability. That is all of the creatures, so let's talk about our land package. Starting out, we have 15 mountains in this deck. This is producing red mana for us, so it is totally OP because we can play it for free. The next card we have is four copies of Darksteel Citadel, which is an artifact land, which is why we're actually having the deck. It's indestructible as well, which makes no difference to us, and it produces colorless mana, which also is no different to us. The thing that is important to us is going to come when we talk about our spells, which we're going to do that right now, because the first spell we have is Kuladoth Rebirth. I'm sure I mispronounced that. We are running three copies of this card, and it allows us to pay one red mana, sacrifice an artifact, and then make three 1-1 one -one goblin tokens. When we get to mid-game, we can just sacrifice our Darksteel Citadel, or technically our Signal Pest if we're in a kind of a pinch, and make three 1-1 one -one goblin tokens, because really this deck doesn't need a lot of lands, so being able to get rid of lands in exchange for creatures becomes a really good strategy late game for us. Next we have Dragon Fodder, we're running four copies of this, and Hordling Outburst, which we're running three copies of this. These are just spells that are straight up creating us goblin tokens, which are fantastic for us because this is going to allow us to go very wide and generally repopulate our board really quick if we do get a board wipe or if things are getting removed from the battlefield. Unfortunately, both of these spells are sorceries, so we can only cast them on our turn, which kind of soaks up a bunch of our mana. Next we have four copies of Shock, because what would a red deck be without some direct damage to your opponent's face or to any of the creatures on the board. It is a simple one red mana for two damage to any target creature or player. It's fantastic. And the absolute last spell we have is Goblin Grenade. We are running four copies of this because it allows us to pay one red mana, sacrifice a goblin, which can easily be a token, and do 
5 damage to target creature or player. We often use this to finish the game off. Unfortunately, Goblin Grenade is also a sorcery, so we're having to do this on our turn. We can't just do it in response or do it at the end of our opponent's turn, which is a little bit sad. But still, 5 damage for 1 red mana and sacrificing a Goblin token is fantastic. That is the entire main deck, but let's move into the sideboard. The first card we have is three copies of Dragon's Claw. This allows us to gain life whenever we're against Burn, or whenever we're against some decks that are gonna like do a little bit more damage to us than we're comfortable with, because whenever a player casts a red spell, we gain a life, and because our entire deck is red, well, except for a couple artifacts, this is going to be really good for us. Next, we have two copies of Forked Bolt. This allows us to separate out some damage if we're running up against Elves or running up against a token strategy. We can use this to kind of divide up some damage and take out the battlefield without playing something like Pyroplasm, which would also wipe our board. Next, we have two copies of Smash to Smithereens. This is for artifact decks. Destroying stuff, doing some damage, getting us a little bit of advantage, hopefully. Next, we have four copies of String Corger. I may have mispronounced that name, but it is used to deal with anything that is big that we can't get around. So we can use it to get rid of Goyf, we can get rid used to get rid of any Eldrazi's, any Wall of Omens, anything that's big that we that is gonna block us basically. We can use this guy to bounce it back to our opponent's hand and then swing in for a whole bunch of damage. Next we have two copies of Tormod's Crypt, which is gonna deal with Dredge or any graveyard strategy. I'm looking at you, Tarma Goyf, we can make you smaller and kill you, hopefully. And lastly, we have two copies of Stone Rain, which is really our only way of dealing with Tron or some Infectex where Blink Moth Nexus is going to be a very big pain in our butt. We can use this to hopefully slow those decks down so we can actually get in lethal damage. Let's move our way into upgrades now. We have a variety of upgrades for this deck. The first one is Lightning Bolt. We can pull out Shock and put Lightning Bolt in. I didn't put Lightning Bolt in this deck because Lightning Bolt is sitting at $3.50 now, so it's no longer really a budget card. It is definitely something that's quite a bit more expensive. So you can put that in in place of Shock. Then we have Legion Loyalist. So not only is this guy a one-drop creature that has haste, which is fantastic for us, but if we attack with him and at least two other creatures, all of our creatures get first strike and trample, which makes our board impossible to deal with sometimes, especially if we manage to get some of our other triggers going off when we have big creatures swinging at our opponent's face. The next card is Goblin Chieftain, and this can be replacing Signal Pest, honestly, because Goblin Chieftain is a lord, and it gives all of our creatures haste. So when we cast any of the spells that are going to give us extra goblins, we can swing in with them right away. We don't have to worry about casting an additional creature that's going to give them haste, which is fantastic. We also have Rabble Master, which is just a super value goblin creature, because it creates us goblin tokens, which is good, and whenever he attacks, he gets plus one, plus oh for each goblin that is also attacking. So he basically becomes another version of Goblin Piledrop. If you're looking for another value one-drop creature, Mog Fanatic is good because you can sacrifice him to do one damage to target creature or player, which can be very helpful at different points in the game. Or if money is not really an obstacle for you, you can always get Goblin Guide. He is the best, single best one-drop creature in red because he allows you to swing in for two damage on turn one because he has a 2-2. Two, two, for one, he does have a little bit of a downside where you reveal the top card of your opponent's library and if it's a land it goes to their hand, but you also get to see what your opponent's getting, so that is also very nice. And the last thing I'd like to mention is if you are looking at upgrading this deck, I would actually recommend taking out the artifact combo, so pulling out the Darksteel Citadels, taking out Koboth Rebirth, and also Signal Pest. Those cards are good, but they are best if they are put together, but they are definitely the weakest part of the deck. All of the cards I listed off can easily replace these, and and if you are going to cut the artifact combo, you can easily go down to 18 mountains as well. And that's it. That's the entire Goblin Tokens deck. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Giant Monster Games if you like this video. Smash that like button and leave a comment on what I mispronounced in this video. Until next time, I'm Adrian, this is Giant Monster Games, and don't forget to game like a giant monster.